Well, that's right, Harold. He's an immigrant from Honduras who never went to school, college, or medical school. Yet the man known as Dr. Savi claims to have found the cure for several life-threatening diseases, including AIDS. Too good to be true? Well, you be the judge. The lump in Myrtle Rick's left breast is gone. I haven't had any symptoms or problems or anything. Sabrina Peterson's son no longer disabled by sickle cell anemia. He has a lot of energy. I have to make him rest. Disease is cured by this man. His name is Dr. Sabi, but he won't find a medical degree hanging from his wall. Instead, a certificate of healing. We have complex things with science, but if we go back to God and use the herbs as God said, then you can see how simple it is. Then you Dr. Sabi believes what ails you can be cured with natural alkali herbs and a vegetarian diet solely made up of what he calls electric foods mushrooms, greens, and rye breads without starch. Well, Hippocrates established the principle of medical science by using herbs to cure diseases, then why the physician using the chemicals? Forty years ago, a doctor in Mexico cured CB of diabetes, asthma, and obesity with the very same herbs and diet he dispenses to all of his patients, whether they're suffering from lack of energy or full-blown AIDS. That package is an intra- cellular chelation. I'm removing plaque from the system. I'm removing inflammation. That is the base for all disease. And according to a medical affidavit provided by Dr. Sebi, it's working. It shows a patient diagnosed with HIV in November of 1993 was cured two months later. Thousands of patients worldwide swear by his methods and natural herbal medicines. In the tiny village, Lisa sought guidance for body and soul from an herbal guru named Dr. Sabi. Dr. Sabi, you know, according to him, can cure anything. Everything from trying to lose weight to, you know, looking for a cure for AIDS. People go there with hopes and dreams that Dr. Sabi can somehow save them. She had been through so many uh, intense problems in her career and in her life and in her personal life that she didn't know where to turn and this doctor she said had shown her how to really open up and, and cleanse all of the negativity out of her she told me she was suffering with alcoholism and that she was smoking excessively cigarettes drinking and smoking she asked me what do i need to do to stay on the side of peace i said fast do what jesus did she said what did jesus do he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Midway through her 40-day ordeal, an obviously gaunt Lisa spoke with MTV News. I've been polluting my body for 30 years. 40 days is not a long time to me to fast. 40 days represents overcoming death. It's, it's the number of days that Jesus fasted for, and I kind of feel like I'm on a journey sometimes don't really know quite where I'm headed. At the ending of the fasting, she came to me. I heard the door opening at two o'clock in the morning. She said, I completed my fast this morning. I said, what did you see? I saw God. She said, I'm going to make you famous. I said, how? Because I'm going to talk about you. Does everyone know you cure AIDS and cancer? There's just a lot of people in the world who are suffering. They're sick. They're not happy. They're looking for answers. They don't know where to turn. Well, I know a man who's been curing AIDS since 1987. This guy has taught me a lot, and I need to share my knowledge, you know, with the world. Welcome to The Rock Newman Show from the campus of historic Howard University, located in the nation's capital. I'm Rock Newman, and it is my desire to inspire you with personal stories of extraordinary achievement. Herbalist Dr. Sebi has cured himself and others of addiction, obesity, and depression. But when he claimed to cure AIDS, he found himself arguing in his own defense before the New York Supreme Court, a case he won. I live in Honduras. Yes. Okay, I'm California. In Honduras, I discovered a plant known as Cusca. Okay. Cusca is a plant that the Maya used to use. Mm -hmm. And they used another one known as the Teosinte. Okay. I eat those plants. Those plants does not have starch or glucose. Uh -huh. 
you will look at your body losing weight and you're going to get frightened. You use the word frightened. I've been afraid, I've been scared since I heard you say that you gave up food for 64 days. What did you do during that 64 day period of time that sustained you, that gave you enough energy to just even get up out of the bed? Well, I was in the village of Usha in Honduras. We have thermal waters there. We have a thermal water there that has a pH of 9.8. A pH of 9.8, meaning that this substance has a high level of oxygen. Uh -huh. And it is oxygen that the body needs, okay. not rice or beans or a piece of meat. Mm -hmm. It needs oxygen. That is the fuel of the body. In 1979, I think it was, uh, you, were, uh, uh, you were charged in New York City with practicing medicine without a license. You were ultimately charged, indicted, and taken before the New York Supreme Court. And I would l advise my viewers who might be questioning your authenticity, that you won that case. Now, what were the, so the charge was practicing medicine without a license and claiming that you had a remedy to cure AIDS, cancer, and diabetes. So the question is, how did you win that case against what some people say are the toughest prosecutors in the land? Well, it was 19, it was 1987. 87, not 79, 87. The 10th okay. of February. Okay. My mother knew they were coming. When I told my mama that I had cured my 13 AIDS patient, she said, they gonna get you, they gonna get you. So let me stop you there. You said I cured my 13 AIDS patients. Yeah. So you had 13 patients yeah. who had AIDS. Yeah. And then you say so cured. you cured them. Sure. Keep talking. So <laughs> my mother said, they're going to get you. I said, but mom, why are they going to get me? Because you must remember that you live in a society that support a certain philosophy and a certain system. You being the color that you are, black, and then you're going against the grain, they're going to get you. So when I'm in my office on February the 10th, here come the detectives. You are charged with practicing medicine without a license, selling product not approved by the FDA, and claiming to cure AIDS and other diseases. Mm -hmm. I said, yes. Well, you are making a fraudulent claim. Mm -hmm. I asked the detective, how do you know that? Mm -hmm. Because you were advertising in newspapers. Of course. I advertised in the Village Voice, the Amsterdam News, and the New York Post. And you were telling people in your, uh, through your advertising that you can cure AIDS, sickle cell, lupus, herpes, blindness, diabetes, paralysis, and others. Uh -huh. Okay, so they come knocking on the door and... and so knock on my door and took me to jail. But the funny thing about it, I was happy. I was very, very extremely happy. When everybody in my office was crying, I was happy because my mama told me they were coming. And I knew that I had sufficient evidence to prove my position, not only scientifically, empirically, historically, and whatever way they would like, desire. So while I was in jail, I'm saying, I wonder what defense they would have against me. Yeah. I would like to know. <coughs> but I didn't blame the Attorney General, Mr. Robert Abrams, mm -hmm. because why should he accept for me the statement that I cure AIDS and sickle cell yeah. and blindness yeah. when no one else has ever made those claims? Mm -hmm. The man had a right to arrest me, but he was making a mistake. So I'm sitting in jail, and I'm happy. When I got out of jail and I began to, when I went in front of the judge, I asked three questions. And they were? They were, 
Your Honor. You defended yourself. Of course I did. Okay. Your Honor, is it a fact that the Holy Bible teaches that the herbs are for the healing of the nations? She said, yes. Is it a fact that science shows that the human body is carbon-based and to complement a carbon-based body, you must have a carbon-based substance to complement it because the body only accepts the substance through the process of chemical affinity. Mm -hmm. Chemical affinity is important. It's an electrical transfer. Chemical affinity. Okay. The body could only accept what it is made of, mm -hmm. not something new or alien to it. Mm -hmm. Last question. Your Honor, is it a fact that the father of medicine, Mr. Hippocrates, the man that established the principle of medical science today, cured every disease known to man? Did he use herbs or chemicals? She said, herbs. I said, thank you very much. I rest my case. Okay. Go ahead. So I understood that the state were unprepared to defend itself. Mm -hmm. They were unprepared because in the past there was 2,781 cases that came before the Supreme Court and lost. Yeah. I won. Yeah. Not only did I prove scientifically, but I had the diagnostic sheets, and I do have them today. Uh -huh. And I, those diagnostic sheets didn't come from me. They came from their school, their American credit, accredited, medical accredited school. Were, did I read it correctly where there was some requirement for you to actually bring patients, a, a patient into court from each of those maladies and that you brought multiple patients in court who one testified themselves and that you had medical medical records one showing that they were victims of the disease and then showing that it had been cured by one doctor and then a second doctor verifying what the first doctor had said yes we have to remember this that <coughs> Whenever you make a statement that goes against the grain, you better be prepared. Mm -hmm. You better be prepared. The judge said that I had to bring one of every patient that I had cured, and there was one that said others. The other was a man that came from Italy. He was paralyzed. But I took, I was supposed to take nine. I took 77. You took 77 patients in court with you? That's correct. But I knew that my brain was not the same as your brain or any other brain, right? Mm -hmm. We're unique. Yeah. So when I make a statement, they're going to take my statement and pit it against philosophy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. I represent an entity that isn't philosophical. And that entity is? Well, it is an African one. I'm an African. <clears throat> and we have to remember that. You see, we think that we could take a philosophy out of Europe or China and inculcate that into the African brain. It does not resonate. It cannot resonate. You cannot be yourself when you've been adulterated. Being that I am an African, I'm going to look at things the African way. And the African way seemed to reduce things to the least common denominator. And guess what I found? That there's only one disease, not two, not three, one. When I opened my big black mouth and told the judge that, the, oh my God. What did you say? I said, Your Honor, there's only one disease. 
And what is Could that? you substantiate that? Uh -huh. okay. Of course, I'm not going to just deploy a bunch of empty words. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I represent a country. I represent a people. I represent a race. And I represent myself. I'm not going to undermine myself. There's only one disease. The judge said, what is it? I said, you already know. She said, try me. It was a woman, Ann Thelman. Mm -hmm. I said, Rana, when someone has sinusitis, what is obstructing the nasal passage? She said, mucus. And when another has bronchitis, what is obstructing the bronchial tubes? <clears throat> she said, mucus. And when another has pneumonia, was covering the cells of the, of the lungs. She said, mucus. Dr. Victor Herbert, who is defending the state of New York, jumped up and said, what about AIDS? You and your one disease theory? I said, Rana, this doctor is saying that I believe in a theory. I am the last individual on earth that could believe in a theory. I do not lend myself to theories or philosophy. Mm -hmm. Either I know or I don't know. Okay. He's talking about theories. Yeah. You talking about the real deal. I'm talking about reality, mm -hmm. not theories, mm -hmm. not philosophy. So please share with this. Uh, so she said, and what about AIDS? Yeah. She said, well, he asked about what about AIDS? He want to know where the mucus. I said, Rana, have you been to an AIDS ward? <clears throat> she said, yes. I said, what is it that the AIDS spits up every five minutes? She said, mucus. Where is the mucus? It's in the skin. It's in the blood and the lymphatic system that makes up the immunological system. That is where you find the mucus, Mr. Victor Herbert. You saying and then that's what I like. Like I said, the medicine really is in the candy. Cause even when you drop a ball like about Dr. Sebi, yeah, like just that one thing they killed Dr. Sebi will make somebody go research who, who Dr. Sebi is. Dr. Sebi, right. met Dr. Sebi? I never met him. I met his wife, and I, I take his products for sure. Now the coolest guy ever. I mean, he was uh when we interviewed him. I think he was about seventy four. Oh y'all interviewed him? Yeah, we interviewed him twice. Damn. Not here, but when I was on the other show, he was able to jump from the floor. Up here on his knees. At, at 70 something. Right. On his knees. Yeah. And he jumped back down and no problems, nothing like that. Why, why you think he they had, killed him? Why do they kill all holistic doctors? Right. Messing up the medical industry. It's, you playing, you short stopping that grind. Why do niggas get killed for hustling in front of a nigga spot? You short stopping the grind. And th these niggas, they check is billions. You got niggas that get flipped for a couple hundred thousand. So you playing with some pharmaceutical money. You know, and what's crazy, I'm, I'm working on doing a documentary on the trial of, in 1985 when Dr. Sebi went to trial against New York. Right. Because he, he put in a newspaper, he cured AIDS. Yeah. Did, did he, did he, he beat, beat the case. case. And yeah. he went to federal court the next day and beat that case yeah. on record. Yep. And nobody talk about it. That's crazy. Man. What makes you want to do a documentary about Dr. Sebi? Um, I think the story is important. I think mm -hmm. it's a powerful narrative. It is. You know what I mean? And I think if, imagine this. Anybody in this room, if I could say, hey, somebody cured AIDS, y'all be like, yeah, right. And then I could show you an example of him going to trial and proving in a court to a jury that he cured AIDS. Y'all would be interested in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And y'all would look into the way he did it, right? So I feel like more so than like championing his products or explaining his methodology, put some light on that case. Imagine being able to cure cancer or being able to cure any type of herpes. It's all kinds and of And that's what things. he do, by no, the that's way. That's what he did. He yeah. Had, yeah, he, yeah, he used to send all types of, of vitamins up to the station.